A lot of interest regarding um, coach's contract. It is, I promise, it is in the final stages of getting done and wrapped up. It is imminent. It will happen. Um, it's just a matter of getting some uh, legal people to sign off on some legalese stuff that flies well above my head. But uh, we'll get it done. It will, um, as soon as we get it done, we'll get the parameters out as soon as we can. Uh, if you guys want the full contracts, it would probably be best to um, request through Freedom of Information Act um, the full contract. And uh, we'll be happy to get you all that stuff as well. Uh, spring practice, as, as you guys know, begins today. Uh, all practices are open to everybody, public, media, photographers, whoever you guys want. Just um, from a media perspective, just let us know who's coming so we can make sure that we let coaches know who is there and, and um, what to expect. Um, be cognizant of social media updates at practice for those of you that are there. Um, obviously, we don't care that you – tweet and, and update and Facebook and that kind of stuff from practice, but be wary of um, of injury updates, that kind of stuff, stuff that's a little bit more sensitive. Uh, we will be monitoring that stuff and make sure that uh, that everything, nothing that is uh, state secret is released. Uh, April 12th is the uh, Hall of Fame induction ceremony and the spring game, both here. The uh, Hall of Fame induction ceremony will be at 11.30, I believe, Poppy. And then the spring game will start at 2 o'clock sharp in the stadium. Again, everybody from a media perspective that wants to come to either one of those events, just let us know and we will get you put on the list. Uh, we have uh, some special guests today, a couple new coaches that we've hired. We sent out a release last week, um, but we wanted to get them here for you guys to, uh, to visit with and to meet. Um, Coach Perry Carter, Coach Marcus Hicks, um, we, you should have all their bio information that we sent last week, but they are here for you guys to, uh, to talk to today, as well as offensive uh, and defensive coordinators John Scladani and Mike Canales. They will both be available for, for, uh, for questions following Coach McCarney's portion. Um, a quick update on ticket sales. We have uh, the one-month update on season tickets um, is uh, just short of 700 uh, accounts. Um, how to put that in perspective um, from you guys for you guys from last year? Uh, after one month, we had done um, just over 100 accounts. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean tickets. Um, those 700 accounts could could be four four tickets per account. I don't know exactly what the number is, but that's 700 accounts uh, after one month, which is uh, well about 600 better than what we were at uh, this time last year. So. There's a lot of interest. Um, there is a lot of uh, there's a lot of buzz. Um, we we think that we're going to probably sell more season tickets than we've ever sold here at North Texas, which is exciting. And uh, the biggest reason for that is uh, what Coach McCartney and his uh, staff did this last year in 2013, going in the bowl game, and uh, what we hope they'll do again this year. Coach McCartney. Morning, guys. Good to see everybody. Uh, I'll just take this opportunity to to uh, um, Thank all of you for coming. It's been 62 days since the bowl game. It's not very long. That's a good thing. That's a good thing. Anytime you don't have uh, much time between the end of last season and the beginning of the next one, that means you've had a really good year, which we have had. Um, uh, I want to thank uh, my two coordinators, uh, Mike Cannell and John Sladani. They were both here. Just did a phenomenal job, beautiful job of leading our offense and our defense last year. They're available to you guys when I get done here. Um, a tremendous job. I had over 30, 300 applicants, over 300 applicants for the secondary jobs that were open. And when you lose real good coaches, teachers, mentors, you better bring in real good coaches and teachers and mentors. And that's exactly what we were able to do. So Perry Carter and LaMarcus Hicks, uh, just phenomenal additions to our staff. Excited about them. Um, all of you, uh, I think most of you got a chance to see uh, Kevin Patrick when he was here um, at the uh, signing day. Uh, celebration we had in the press conference, and he's already had a real positive impact on our program. And we ha we added two really really good coaches and people that are here. So and you'll get a chance to visit with them here in a little bit. Um, practices um, uh, are wide open, as Cap said. I've I've not changed that since I took the job here. Spring it's wide open, fall it's closed. Um, there's a lot of real exciting races that are going to begin today at practice, even though we just have shorts on, no pads. Um, but a lot of positive momentum going in this program, which is really fun. It's, it's exciting as a head coach and as all of us as coaches here. It's fun to see this and watch it and, 
and experience it and be a part of it. Um, so, but it's it's wide open for everyone. Uh, spring game, as Cap mentioned, will be April twelfth, and uh, we got a lot of work to do between now and then. Um, injuries. Uh, Reggie Pegram uh, on track after his ACL reconstruction and his knee doing really really well. Obviously, he won't be with us this spring. Uh, Rex Rollins will be able to do anything as long as it doesn't include contact or collisions, which means he can't do much. Um, but he got hurt during the season, as you know, and uh, we really are excited about Rex, but he won't be involved in any of the contact or scrimmage or anything like that this spring. Uh, Chris Loving, uh, tight end that we redshirted last year, ended up having some hand surgery. Unfortunately, a guy that needs spring practice more than anybody on our whole football team won't be able to practice this spring. So uh, he, he, he's got to stay into it mentally. He's got to learn. He's got to uh, go through mental reps. But as far as getting out there and practicing and scrimmaging and, and uh, fighting for a position on this football team, Loving won't be able to do that. And that's unfortunate because he needs it really, really, really bad. James Jones, one of our starting corners, um, had nothing to do really with a football injury or anything, like, but he had some major surgery, part of his intestine removed. Uh, he's doing great, but he won't be involved in spring football. He'll be with us. He'll be out there, but he can't practice or he can't scrimmage. So those four guys will not be with us this spring as far as uh, injuries go, as far as we go in, in, into uh, spring football. Um, I appreciate um, uh, Rick Villarreal, uh, Neil um, Smotrisk, our new president. It's Obviously, he's a, he's a tremendous leader. It's real obvious uh, in the short time that I've been here. Uh, Lane Rollins passed the baton to – uh, our new president, and we got great leadership at this university. Um, what they did was in, 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 in putting a contract in place really is, uh, is showing appreciation for changing the culture at this place. It's showing appreciation for how we do it, the way we've done it, uh, on the field, in the classroom, uh, in Denton, Texas, how we handle things. And I think it's a, it's, a, it's a sign of support for all of my guys, all of my staff, my program, our program, and what we've done and how far we've come. So I appreciate uh, that uh, opportunity to stay here. And uh, I'm not looking to leave. I love this place. My coaches do. Uh, if we lose a coach, it's not because they're unhappy. Um, both of my coaches that left, uh, frankly, had, had got six-figure raises. Um, I, I'm not I'm not much on secrets, okay? I'm just not into that kind of stuff. I just – my guys left because they could take better care of their families from a financial standpoint, just tremendous opportunities financially. And it wasn't because, well, we don't think we can repeat at North Texas or we're unhappy or we don't like going to work every day or it's not that much fun at North Texas or we don't like living in Denton. All those things are just great positives. But uh, financially, that worked out great for them, and I'm, I'm happy that the uh, – those guys got those opportunities. That's never easy as a head coach because you have to deal with transition. Um, but I've always had a short list, and I always will. And uh, we have really, really hired some great guys that are coming in here. Um, the challenge ahead is, is this. Uh, are we a real program, which means every year that um, um, no matter who you lose or injuries or senior graduations or leadership or the captains you lose, uh, can the next group come in here and replace them and keep the beat going? Or do we just disappear off the college football landscape uh, for another 10 years uh, before we can have success again? So we want to keep the edge. We want to be really, really successful. We want a program that people can be really proud of, not just a team, which a, a, our team in 2013, anybody that's ever had anything to do with North Texas football was proud of. But a program means you're proud of that program. That means every year you want to support them. You want to jump out there and buy tickets. You want to get behind the team. Um, you want to take those 40,000 of which 99% of those fans down in the Cotton Bowl on January 1st were our fans, and you want to bring them back to Apogee Stadium and, uh, and have a chance to really keep the positive momentum going in this program. So that's where we're at right now, and appreciate everybody being here and opening it up to questions. Yeah, I mean, it's continuity, it's stability, it's, it's these guys are doing it the right way. This staff, it's not just me, obviously. I'm only as good as the people I surround myself with, and that means I surround myself with really good coaches, just phenomenal people. And more and more and more people are starting to realize that, and um, it, it is a great choice. And when you can do that, let's, then we don't have to take a back seat, and we don't have to run around and go, okay, we're just North Texas, and you are whoever you are. 
Um, we're all um, competitive. We all want to win. But this is a great choice, a tremendous choice. And when we finish with one of only 35 bowl champions in America and we finish with top votes in the top 25 and we finish with nine wins, which is an elite level in football, and people said – it's a sleeping giant, it's a sleeping giant, it's a sleeping giant. Well, thank God we finally woke his ass up. We finally woke that giant up. We got him awake, okay? So those things are all real positives. Now, let's keep it going. We're going to run around, pat ourselves on the back, and keep talking about last year? No, let's, let's keep this thing going. And let's be a program that people respect every year, no matter who graduates or who gets hurt or which coaches leave. We're, we're competitive every year, and we're going to draw the line in the sand every year. And no matter who's here and who's not here, we got a chance to win. And that's what I promised uh, uh, Lane Rollins and Rick Villery when I took this job. I want to build a program that no matter who we play where, as you know, no matter who we play where, when, we got a shot. And I think we've gotten to that point, but we're going to find out. And uh, practice starts today, and it's pretty cool to be back on the practice field and can't wait to get going here in just a few hours. Yeah, I mean, I think it gets back, Joe, we build a competitive environment. Um, you compete against yourself. You compete against your teammates. You compete against the people we're going to be playing. Um, there's, there's just, you know, every day you walk in this building over here, we want to compete to win. We don't just compete to compete. We compete to win. Well, what does that mean? Um, that means when you walk in the building, you're not just trying to be okay and you're not trying to cover your rear end so somebody's not gnawing on it because you didn't do as good as you should have. It means you have so much pride about yourself that you want to be successful. You want to be good. You want to keep this tradition going. It's kind of neat uh, when people around the country respect who we are and what we're doing. It's pretty neat when that happens. Well, do you like that? Yeah, well, let's keep it going. So the guys that really contributed last year, and we've got some guys coming back that have done that, great, let's keep it going. The guys that didn't do a damn thing, Let's go. It's time for your time. It's time for you to step up. For guys that just got here in January, I know it's all brand new and it's it's it's, it's new and it's a new opportunity and all. But step in and go, man, because these depth charts are so wide open. But now we have a program where guys have experienced success and honor and prestige and winning. Doesn't that feel good? Sure, sure it does. So we're gonna keep that going. Oh, we're just going to go on back because every once every once every decade, the old Mean Greens show up and they they have some success and then they disappear and nobody even talks about them. And that's a real challenge because um, I shared this with my football team in the turnarounds that I've been a part of. Iowa was an assistant, Wisconsin as a coordinator, Iowa State as a head coach, and hopefully now at North Texas. All those programs, we didn't disappear after our turnaround season, which we just had here just 62 days ago. We didn't disappear. We showed up again. And we were a program, and we were a program on the rise, and we won, and we went to bowl games again. But when you look at our schedule, it's going to be damn tough. It's going to be hard now. Five in-state rivals. Um, look at the schedule. Uh, it, it hadn't been announced. I'm sure it'll be a national TV game uh, down in Austin, Texas. You know, I mean, that's going to happen. We all know that. It's going to be a national TV game. Um, um, and most people are going to be looking to see uh, the Longhorns, and we feel like we can go in there and hopefully match up and – make it a heck of a game and have a chance to win the football game because that's what we do no matter who we play where. We want to try and do that. So that was a long damn answer to a short question, Joe. <laughs> it seems like you're starting to come to different places here. You talked a little bit about coming off the game. How much difference does that really make when you start to rebuild? Yeah, I think we've seen it already, Brett. And my guys will talk to you about it, uh, the coordinators, John and, and, uh, and Mike Canellis. We've already seen it already. Um, these guys know what we expect now. There's been rewards for their efforts. They've seen uh, what can happen if you really believe and you defy the odds and you don't worry about outside expectations and all you care about is what happens on the inside. Um, and there's a tradition now. It's a tra tradition of winning. How do, you, how do you win at North Texas? How do we win? You take care of the ball on offense. You have a real physical run game. You're high efficiency throwing the football. Um, defensively, you, you uh, play with this amazing tenacity and toughness and effort uh, that John Skaldani's led our defense to. That's the way you play the game. Um, we were plus, uh, I think we had 34 turnovers last year. We're way in the plus category. Um, and then Tommy Perry leads our special teams into this dramatic turnaround. That's how we do it now, okay? You block kicks, you have great returns. We had some huge shoes to fill. Breland Chancellor ain't going to be here anymore. So we walked out of practice today, and where's that little cat? Where's that little short little cat that makes Georgia miss and makes all these teams, you know what I mean? They're not going to be there anymore. So 
that's what we got to do. But that's the exciting part of it because the standards are in place. The expectations are in place now. We have done it. It's not just lip service. Let's go do it again. And that's the challenge that's out there. Can we keep the edge? Can we eliminate complacency? Are you complacent? I'm not. My coaches aren't. But we got to make sure those 100 guys that are out there at practice today aren't complacent about anything. Why not? Why, why not keep the edge? Why not be hungry? Not This undying loyalty to one another, which we had last year, this tremendous leadership of which we had, this edge that we played with, can we manufacture that again? Can we pull it together? Can we do that again through coaching? We're going to find out, and it's a daily process. Yeah, we hope so, Joe. We think so. We're going to find out. We just spent some time today. I've met with the offense and the defense, and we're talking about potential leaders. Who are leaders right now? Who are leaders? I'm not talking about just who jaws and shoots their mouth off and says good things and all that stuff. Who are the leaders in the best of times, the toughest of times? Who do you want representing you? Leadership is about taking people they can't take themselves. Leadership is about taking people that this is where you're at right now from a talent standpoint, but leadership, real leaders – take you to places that you ought to be, not where you're at right now, but where you ought to be. And that's as coaches, that's as players, that's as leaders, that's as a senior class. But the neat thing is I'll go into my team meeting today at 210 before we hit the field, I'm going to ask all those seniors to stand up in that front row. You just saw over the last few months what a senior class can do if they're collective, collectively chemistry, together, believe, loyal, lead by example. You do those things. God, it's amazing what you can accomplish because we won nine games and really had a shot, a real shot. As you guys know, that watched us, we had a shot of 10 or 11 wins last year. And I'm not complaining because we won nine in a bowl championship. But we had a shot at those things, and it still went with that senior class. So now those juniors that are now seniors, even though their eligibility isn't senior yet, it, they're seniors. Okay, they're seniors. They were seniors the day after our bowl championship. you got to lead us, and you got to follow the footsteps. And you saw those great examples of last year's senior class, how it's supposed to be done. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 I'm anxious. I mean, I really am. It's real important that we find those guys. And we were in meetings earlier today just talking about who are playmakers, proven playmakers, and who are potential playmakers. There's a difference. Who's already done it on the field? Who do we think has a chance to do that? And those are the things that we're looking for. And uh, is it Carlos Harris, who's already proven he's one of the best third-down receivers in the Conference USA last year? Is it Darius Terrell, who played a little bit last year, did some positive things, but who can step it up and make things happen? Is it Jimerson, who's had some really, really good games and some good plays, but he needs to be more consistent? Who knows? Um, Rex Rollins and Reggie Pegram, two really good backs, are going to miss spring football. But those guys are good players and lots of – potential and talent uh, it, it, on offense who we kidding as, as Mike can also tell you this cat taking the snap it all starts with you so play within our system do what we ask you to do protect the football and and, and, and make some plays along the way too who's dynamic who's dynamic as a leader who's dynamic as a player who's dynamic as a leader um, all those things it's just real real important so but that's a fun thing about this right now so and it's the old give a crap factor. Uh, people starting to give a crap about what's going on in North Texas. It's kind of fun, isn't it? You know what I mean? It's kind of fun. They care. Uh, we're going to have a live uh, TV telecast today after the end of practice for sports station. That's pretty cool stuff because it just hadn't happened much at North Texas. So we want to keep this great momentum going, this positive momentum that we got so that we don't just flash in the pan, win nine, got your bowl victory, got your bowl championship, and then go on back down where you've been for many, many years getting your tail kicked all the time. We like to be a factor in the race every year, and we like to be a program that people appreciate and respect all the time. You mentioned on signing day that there are probably about four guys that are going to be in the quarterback race. Is your perspective on that changed at all? No, no, it's wide open. And you can ask uh, Chico about it here a little bit. Coach Canell, he'll tell you it's wide open, it's exciting, it's fun. We lost the MVP of the bowl game. Um, um, but but we got to find out who the next guy is going to be, and that's every day. It's an everyday evaluation. Who's it going to be? Who's it going to be when we, we, we get out there and we go on national TV and the first snap out there is against the Texas Longhorns on national television, which I'm sure it will be. 
who's it going to be? Who's the cat going to be? Who, who's everybody on that football team looking to from, from a leadership standpoint and a consistency standpoint? So, But that's what's fun about spring ball. I got a feeling we'll have more people come out and watch us this spring than we've had the last few years. There's been slow but gradual interest in our program, and I think people are starting to really care about what we're doing and, and uh, who we kidding. I mean, I've, I've, heard, I've gotten more emails, text messages, and calls from North Texas fans in the last three months than I did my first three years here. And I think it's the people really starting to care again. That, and and that, as a head coach, I love that. You just love that. You mentioned that you had a talk with Ben John uh, a couple months ago uh, about leadership and body language and things like that. Yeah. And that's the area you really wanted him to emphasize. Have you seen – I know you haven't even started practice yet. Yeah. In the weight room and things like that, are you seeing any progress there that you want to see? Yeah, we're going to find out, Joe. We really are. And, you know, it just it's just – it's really wide open. You've got a returning veteran in – uh, 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 Jim in, in uh, Andrew McNulty that's played. Okay, he's played a little bit. Played some. Started I think one game. Chico right at, at Tulsa a year ago. Played a little bit. Connor Means comes in mid-year high school guy. Um, you, you got you got uh, Dejan that you're talking about. Uh, you got a quarterback that's coming in that's played some football at this level. Coming in from a junior college. Um, that, that everybody's really excited about just watching him and what things that he's doing. So they're they're all here kind of. Different. They got here different ways, but the bottom line is they're all here. And today, when we start practice at 3:30, it's wide open. The MVP of the of the bowl game is gone. Okay, so who's going to be the guy and who's going to be most consistent? Who's going to take it and run with it? Go. And everything they do from the minute they step on that field to the minute they walk off, it's all going to be evaluated uh, by all of us, but especially Coach Canellis, who coaches a quarterback. So, but um, it'll, it, it's exciting. That part's fun. And and uh, Derek Thompson wasn't the best athlete I've ever been around he wasn't the best quarterback I've ever been around but he could lead and he could win and he had the edge and he was so motivated and he was so tough and he wanted it so badly he helped will our football team to nine wins last year so who's the next guy that can do that is it a redshirt freshman is it a mid-year transfer is it a junior college guy is the guy that's been in the program that's been kind of sitting around watching most of the time and standing over there signaling and all that stuff which is great and that's cool but what the hell have you done on game day we're gonna find out We'll find out here. So, Mac, last year, uh, heading into the season, the weakness or the critics said it was the defensive line was the weakness. Mm -hmm. You proved the critics wrong. The defensive line really played well. Yeah. Heading back into this this coming season, defensive line looks like another question mark. You graduated three or four seniors there. What do you think about the defensive line? You know, not individually, but as a group, as a unit, in terms of what you have talent-wise heading into. Yeah, it's going to be fun, you know, and uh, Kevin Patrick, John Skladani, we've all talked a number of times I'm just trying to get ready for this spring. This rotation that we got into last year really helped us win nine games. We played eight to nine every Saturday, eight to nine every Saturday. We want to make that our standard now, not our exception. That's the way it should be all the time. Now we got to find out what does that mean? That means some guys that haven't done a damn thing in the program that have been here need to step up. That means it might be a newcomer coming in. It might, mean, it might mean a guy like Q Brown that's coming off a, a year ago when he had the major surgery coming out of spring ball. Maybe it's his time to make a move. But we need to find another eight or nine. And this time last year, we sure as heck didn't have eight or nine that I believed in, or Mike Nelson didn't, or John Skladating didn't. But by the time the Idaho game rolled around, we had eight or nine guys that were in that rotation. And we're going to make sure that we do that again. Um, but I believe in Kevin Patrick. Is the defensive line coach. He's really, really good. I believe in John Skaldani as my coordinator because it's a proven system that gave us eighth scoring defense, which is the most important statistic in college football on defense. Scoring defense, how many points do you give up? That's the most important one. Um, and uh, and it's time for some guys. And we've had some individual meetings, some group meetings. We've got met with some guys. And, uh, it's time. They better get going now because we're not going to sit around. You're not going to come here and just keep signing those scholarship papers and show, stand around and practice and lift weights and go to class and get your degree. That's great. And you do nothing on Saturdays? That's not fair to your teammates or this coaching staff or the program. So let's go. Step up so you guys can figure out who that is. It's time. And we got some guys in that defensive line need to do that. Yeah, we're going to find out. I mean, who knows? Uh, who knows? Abby was just a guy as a sophomore my first year. He was just a guy as a junior. He was just a body out there. That's what he was. Finally, for lots of reasons, Brett, he became a really, really good player for us as a senior. And, and it was disruptive and was tough and was consistent and was prideful. And I'm really proud of him. As long as I live, I'll be really proud of what he did because he was just about done with the program, as you know. 
and he came through as a senior, really came through for us. But it wasn't like uh, there were uh, agents knocking his door down as a sophomore, junior. He didn't, he didn't do much of anything, to be honest with you. All of a sudden, as a senior, he made his mind up. So I'm hoping some guys can really step in there and do that now. Keep an eye on Sid Moore. The as you come out to practice this spring, and Kevin Patrick will tell you the same thing now. Reg, freshman, he's starting to figure this whole thing out. Keep an eye on him. Uh, I think he's got a chance to be a really, really good player. But we want to get back to that eight and nine man rotation. We want to play lots of guys. We want to do that in our football team. As you see all these seniors that have departed and held up that trophy and wore the hats of a champion, of a bowl champion, and you see what we accomplished, there's still lots of guys on this team that played, and at least they were out there, and they did contribute. And that helps you when you go into these practices now that, come on, man, let's go, step it up. There was your role last year, and you got out there, and you got a taste of it. Now help us more. Give us more snaps, more winning snaps. That's the fun thing. Sometimes you make positional changes. You're the guy from defensive end to tight end or vice versa. Do you foresee any of those heading into spring, or is it too early? Yeah, there's just not much. Uh, you know, I, I think I think we uh, there's probably just a couple guys. Andrew Tucker, we moved from safety to running back. Um, and John Shalacy, because of James Jones' um, hospitalization and the surgery that he had, we're moving from safety to corner, which is what he played right here in Denton. Um, in, in high school, and that's really it from a position change standpoint. So not many, just those two. That's it. And we got some transfers that we want to see how they'll do. Sam Rice came from SMU. Um, he's ineligible this year, but we really like what he's doing so far. So a year from now, um, I, I think he's got a chance to be a really good player. Um, Blake uh, Bean came from Buffalo, played some last year at Buffalo. He's got a red shirt this year. He'll be with John Skaldani as a linebacker. We like him a lot. Dan Cotman uh, from here in Denton went to San Diego State, played some as a true freshman, has to set out a transfer, but he's with our program. Uh, Jordan Richmond went to Texas A&M as a linebacker. We've already moved him to defensive end, got to sit out because of the transfer. But when you have the Marcus Trice stories, and he's, the, he's not the only one, but he's an obvious one, transfer, captain, all-conference USA, uh, got a chance to hopefully uh, get picked up and, and have an opportunity in the NFL, which I think he will. Those kind of things, uh, you know, help your program. You'll get some other guys coming in. A lot of these transfers are guys that were local and probably were recruited by North Texas, but for whatever reason chose to go somewhere else. What are you going to say about your program that sort of guys are wanting to come back home? Instead? Yeah, I think a couple of things. I think, first of all, they know that, oper- that walk-ons will get an opportunity here. Uh, 22 guys I put on scholarship in the three years I've been here, that helps. Uh, you're going to get an opportunity here. Uh, number two, if things don't work out when you leave, whatever university it is or whatever school it is or in-state or out-of-state, and some of these kids are out-of-state, obviously, um, when you come back, it's home. It's closer to family. It's closer to people that have inspired you and motivated you throughout your life. And uh, and to be part of a story, That that's that's what I love about it. You know, when I got here and there were these things and that things and this was negative and this was down and the grades and the football and the attendance and getting your tail kicked and all that stuff. Use it as your excuse or use it as your story. We've decided to make it our story. Let's make it a story at North Texas. And that's really what we've done. And it's collectively, it's coaches and players and scholarships and walk-ons and coaches that have been here since the day I took the job and coaches that just got here. It's all of us together on the same page. And everybody understanding their roles and their responsibilities and never lose the edge and never lose the motivation that we have. And I think that's in place. And I can't wait to get started today. Can you tell? I can't wait to get started today. So, Anybody else? Thanks, guys. Appreciate everybody being here. Thanks.